Yo, what is up, Crocs and Clan members, Legend of Court fans, and others who have stumbled upon this video? I'm Swords of Crocs, and today we're going to be covering episode 11 of Legend of Court. So, today, the episode was actually freaking good. There were some things I wanted, I, I mean, it's not that they were bad, it's just that it, it, this, this, this really is pointing against what I was hoping for, which is another encounter with Kavira and then the final fight with Kavira. Which I mean, it's fine. Like I'm not, I'm not completely upset about it, but I would have enjoyed it more if it had been that way. But this is this is essentially the attempt at taking over Republic City. That that is the, that is the purpose of this episode. Uh, so in the very beginning, you know, Korra and them were, you know, I shouldn't say Korra and them because not everybody. Okay, so we have Korra, the president, Tenzin, and uh, Wu. Slash Mako. You have to say it like that because you got to count them together now. Um, <clears throat> they're talking because remember how in the last episode Wu suggested you know evacuating people. The problem was is or the problem was that it was kind of like a suggestion. So it was it was like if you want to come with us and evacuate, well you're welcome to. But it wasn't mandatory, so there was only like certain, like it was just a small group of people that decided to go. Most of the people are, they don't, ex they don't think, they don't imagine a threat, so they're like, oh well, well, I mean, I don't think there's a need for me to leave my house, so they just don't go. Now, Bolin and the gang end up barging through the door, and kind of like, hey, yo, we got some problems. And then Julie explains everything. Um, so Julie starts saying how you know this and this, the the weapon, the rails, two weeks. She basically explains the whole shebang. I can't believe I said shebang. I haven't. I don't think I've ever said that in my life, and I just said it right now. I'm gonna leave it in. <laughs> so she explains everything, right? She essentially explains everything. So, because they have a two-week timetable, essentially, like, they only have that much time to get everybody out, it's mandatory now. So, if you want to live, you better get out of there. Like, actually, you don't even have a choice. Just get get your stuff and go. Like, that is that is the rule. That is the law. You better go do it right now. Uh, <clears throat> so, there, there's no options anymore. You're, it's not if you want to. It is you're going to go whether you like it or not. Uh, so... Wu is now, is, he's still the main person to get people out, right? Like, so, uh, what they decide, what they plan on doing is, um, they're going to split up everything, right? So, you have uh, Wu getting people out, Korra is, um, what is, no, Korra wasn't doing anything at that moment. Just, I guess he was just there. Uh, you have Varric and Asami is supposed to be working on the flying suits, thingamajigs, uh, and then the benders, the airbenders, are supposed to be on surveillance and all that stuff. Now, uh, what ends up happening is that when Mako, Mako is the one that actually starts delivering the whole evacuation plan, the problem is he was reading it off the manual and he was trying to guide people through the manual, which don't do. Especially the way he did it, because the biggest problem with manuals in, 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 in any world, including ours, here's what happens when you get a manual. You might look at it the first time you get it, you might, you know, maybe skim through it, maybe if you don't know what you're doing, you skim through it and all that stuff. But then you just, you, add, you honestly forget what you did with it. Like, I, I know there's, I've had plenty of manuals in my life, I have no idea what to do with them. You know, that's what ends up happening. You either lose it or you just forget about it to the point where you actually have no idea what the heck he's talking about. So what happens when you try to guide them through a manual? People start calling up the station all freaking out and confused because they don't know what the heck is going on. It's a big deal. It's a big problem. It just so happens to be something we can relate to because in real life, that's how we are. People don't care about manuals half the time. Half the time, people just throw them away. And the other times, they just flat out lose them. So if you're you're being guided through, oh I don't know, page seven hundred, section two point seven, paragraph three, 
you're not going to know what the heck to look for because you have no idea what the heck he's talking about or you have no idea what the thing is. So what do you do? You freak out. So you start calling people. You're like, hey, yo, I'm confused. I'm scared. I don't even know what the heck's going on. Wu did business right there. He's like, bruh. I got this. And then he like moves Mako and then he sits down. He starts explaining. He starts, he basically gives a speech trying to connect with the people how he used to be very scared. He he didn't even go to the bathroom by himself. He always needed a bodyguard with you know, bodyguard being Mako. Obviously we know that. But that, you know, through this whole process, he's, you know, learned. That, I mean, now, now he can go to the bathroom by himself. And how he knows that these people in Republic City are very brave, they're very awesome, they're very great, they're, and all this other stuff, and that they have the power to go to the bathroom by themselves. I could have lived without the bathroom thought, the, the bathroom part, but the thing that impressed me the most is I always saw Wu as a useless character. He's all, he he was literally the character that I was like, this man is just. Like, woohoo, he's going to be a king, but, like, he didn't seem right to be that in that position. After this, I can see it. I actually, even everybody in the station saw it. This, the man has grown in the split, like, one month or whatever. But he's progressed. He's gotten better. He's gotten more mature, if you want to say it that way. He actually looks like he could be a good king. And I, for one, support him now. Like before, I honestly was, I was actually questioning whether they could handle him as a king. And then I was like, I don't know if he's worth being king. And then it was just, I just don't care about him. But now, he he just turned it all around. So now I actually feel okay having this man as the king of the Earth Kingdom. Um, <clears throat> plus it also helps that I hate Kavira. All freaking <laughs> through the bottom of my heart <laughs> so I mean I like him I like him he actually grew on me because of the speech he did the, the thing that makes a good ruler is connecting with your people and he was able to con connect with Republic City and I, I, I commend him for that I actually commend him for being able to do that so he like I said he is the one that's supposed to get people out so he is going to get them and put them in the trains and then leave, right? So that's that's the job, right? Uh, so they're gonna they're also gonna cut off the railway system because you know the tank. <laughs> Remember the tank from the couple last couple episodes? Uh, <laughs> so we got to deal with that. Um, so just a lot of little bits and pieces here and there. Uh, and then um, <clears throat> Julie comes in with Bolin to talk to Barry and. Here's the thing, that scene, two things happen, two things happen. One, I fell for Beric's shenanigans again, <laughs> and then I sided with Julie again. Uh, okay, so Julie comes in, and then Beric, like, Bolin tells Beric that he needs, he needs to say something, and then Julie's like, I got this first, and he she apologizes for everything. Um, <clears throat> and, like, Beric actually looked sincere. I was, I was actually surprised. Mistake number one, don't believe Barry. The man doesn't change. Because as soon, okay, so he looked like he was going to say something back. Like, you know, apologize himself or say something. Or how he, he he feels like maybe he was in the wrong and then Julie didn't have any reason to apologize or stuff. Something along those lines. He pulled a Barry. He's like, I'm Julie, you're forgiven. I'll get to work. And I'm just like. Damn it, I fell for it again. <laughs> I've done this so many times before. I need to stop. This man this man has gotten the least character development in the entire series, and he's been since season since book one. This man has been in the show since book one. Yeah, since book one. Wait a minute. I'm pretty sure now, now, yeah, he's been in every single book. I know that I think about it. He's been in every single book. Which means that he has he's one of the characters that should have one of the mo the most character development. He is the same guy he was in book one. That makes me kind of upset now that I think about it. <clears throat> but anyways, so here's what I meant when I I sided with Julie again. Because when she made the speech before when she betrayed Barry, 
I was on her side. She flat out just said, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm not here to work for you. Either you treat me like an equal or I'm out. And she just booked it. I'm like, Julie, I'm with you, girl. Okay, because she, she has, she does everything, right? She's, she should be the boss, not Barry. <laughs> uh, okay, so that that was that little fun snippet right there. Now, when Tenzin, uh, that is another thing, Tenzin tries to convince his family to go. They don't want to go. They won't stay. Milo gets one of, uh, another classic line. I mean, it's not really like a classic. It really, I thought it was funny. Because, uh, like, Tenzin tells his wife he's going to help, you know, woo, get people out. You know, get them in train safely, calmly, you know, all organized, and then go and keep through the process. Whereas the three kids are now going to be part of the whole, whole airbender lookout scenario thing. And Milo's like, Kuvira's going to regret the day she messed with me. <laughs> and I'm just like, Milo, you still got it, bruh. And Dunora is just like, ah. And just like, she's just tired of it. I'm like, Janora, come on, he's a little boy. Just let him have his fun. Let him have his fun. I mean, if I was a little boy like that, I would be doing the same thing. I'm like, I got this. Everybody just chill. I got, I got, I got this. I got this. And I would just stand there all prepared. <laughs> anyway, Milo's one of my favorite characters. I've said this since the beginning of the series. Like, Milo's one of my favorite characters. He's just the funny character in the show um dang I've been I've been talking so much and I'm not even done with the like halfway uh anyway so they set up their whole section thing presidents now in Avatar Island what's that stuff Korra comes up with a plan to go take down the weapon because probably a good idea to take down the weapon because then the war would actually be kind of balanced because that thing is way too strong and way too open <clears throat> Turns out Kavira did a. Damn, I hate her. <laughs> this is actually a good thing, though. I actually need a villain to hate. That was the biggest problem, book three and book two. And I mean, kind of book one. Uh, I didn't hate the characters. I hate Kavira. I actually do hate her. She freaking. She made a freaking giant mech. And I'm just like, when the heck did you do this? And everybody in the bison was just like, huh? And I was just like, huh? And then, like, Duke was like, did you know about this? And Bolin's like, oh, yeah, Marco, I just totally forgot the giant mech that just happens to be carrying the weapon. No, I didn't know about this. I'm just like, neither did I. What in the heck is, where did this come from? They only had a week. Like, how do you, how, uh, uh, I'm so confused. Like, ah, it was it, it, it was a giant mech with the weapon like just hanging off his arm, and then like I'm just like, like, so now they gotta go back and try to re-strategize everything because, well, besides the fact that she's a week early, it's a giant mech with the freaking arm cannon thing. It was just crazy, man. It was ridiculous. And so, they do that, right? They do that. They, they go talk. They're like, hey, yo, we, it's a freaking giant mech thing. And so, like, you have Iroh and his army. Korra's in front with him. Asami and the rest are trying to work on the suits so they can get geared up and then go. And just freaking crazy stuff going on. Kavira gets there. She shows off a little bit of the cannon thing. And Trezman's just like, I quit! I'm done. I surrender. I'm out of here. Bye. And I'm just like, bruh, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you, I do, do you not see all that we've done? All the planning? And you're just gonna, as soon as she fires the thing, you're like, I quit. You don't do that, okay? You don't do that. Grow some testicles, man. <laughs> but it's like, it's, it just blew my mind that he just quit just because she fired the thing. Did they not warn you how powerful this thing was? Did you expect it to just go pew? You should have expected it to blow up something. Uh, now it's because he quit. Oh, now they now they gotta talk. So she's gonna send Bakar Jr. Which 
I remembered his name, especially since they mentioned it like 20 billion times this episode, because uh, it was a crucial component to the whole thing. So it's like, so he's going he's supposed to go in his airship to talk to the president so they can. But basically, what they've been doing with every city that they've conquered is just, oh, we're gonna we're gonna talk to the leader and then get basically turn everything to us and all this stuff. Um, so that's essentially what's gonna happen. Now, because they surrendered, Iroh is in danger. Like he's in trouble now because he has to. He basically has has to go. <clears throat> and then he's like, Cora, you gotta get out of here and find a way to destroy that thing. And she does. She leaves, and she meets up with everybody else. You know, Asami, Bolin, Julie, you know, Tenzin, the kids, and all that stuff. They, they, they decide on, uh, like, Cora's, like, asking, like, what, what is this? And then she asks Julie, and she's like, I don't know about this. Um, and so, but she's like, but maybe, you know, who was it? Beric said something about Bakar being a genius. And then Cora's like, Bakar Jr., that's it. So they just got, hey, we gotta, we gotta go get him. Kidnap him and make him talk. And I was like, Cora, that is one of the best ideas you've had all series long. Straight up. I like it. Uh, and he, Tenzin, like, he was like, let's go. Let's do this right now. And so it's her, Tenzin, Umi, Janora, and uh, one kid whose name I can't remember. Janora's boyfriend. <laughs> I gotta say it now. I gotta say it now. <clears throat> they're supposed to be, they're, they're gonna go on a stealth mission, basically. And then Milo, another Milo thing. Milo's like, "What about me?" And she's like, "Well, you see, this is gotta be a quiet, like, very silent stealth mission, stuff like this." And you're kind of eccentric and loud. And he's like, "I can be crying." And he's like, "Point taken." Fine. I'm just like Milo. Your your job is just to be awesome. That's all you need. And so, so they go. They kidnap you know Picard Jr. And they're gonna interrogate him. He actually talks to, like his mom actually tries to convince him. Uh, Cora actually tried an empty threat, but it didn't work. And then like so, Su Yin tried to talk to him. He was like, "Nope, Cora or Kuvira." <laughs> wow, that would have been bad. Kuvira is in my family now, and I love her and all this other stuff. And then Cora again. This is smart. I liked it. Cora is like, "I got this." You know what? Fine. Don't talk. Kuvira, yeah, Kuvira might win. But I'm going to do something. I might not be able to hurt you physically. Okay? I might not. But I can do it psychologically and emotionally. Here's what I'm going to do. Yes, Kuvira might take the public city. But I'm going to take you. No matter where I go, no matter where I run to, I'm taking you with me. I'm going to make sure for the rest of my life, my goal will be to make sure you never see the love of your life again. And I'm like, done. Cora. You have earned my respect again. You have earned my respect. Thank you. Oh my gosh, that was the most epic thing she said. I'm pretty. I'm actually pretty sure that's the most epic thing she's ever said. That that right there, that is a real threat. That is what you do to this man. You don't mess with physical violence. You 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 attack the mind. See, the mind is a special thing. It's a very strong thing. If you target that. You win automatically. That's how you win. You just gotta attack the mind. Mind. You do that, man. You learn, learn, learn. Uh, and he freaks out. You can't do that. Well, I can. I will. <laughs> and then so the airship is going. So I remember the president's supposed to talk to Barak Bar Newton. Problem is, he's not in the airship. So what happens? He's like waiting. Apparently, he's not in the gym. <gasps> we didn't know that. And the funny thing is, Kuvira actually calls the airship to talk to Bakar. And here's the thing, since he's not there, the president's like, give me that. And he's like, hey, Kuvira, what are you doing? I'm not here to play games. Are you playing games? I do not play games, okay? You told me to be here, wait for Bakar Jr., and we're going to get some stuff done. Where is he? He's not even here. I'm not playing no games. And she's like, what do you mean he's not there? I don't know. I'm over here waiting for the dude, and apparently he's not on the airship. What kind of games are you playing? I ain't here to play games. <laughs> and at that moment, Bakar Jr. like calls from there the area to let the to talk to Kavira and explain his whole situation, how he got kidnapped, you know, and like he was being interrogated and all this stuff. But that they're saying that if she doesn't back down, 
they're never gonna let the, him see her. Like they were, they're never gonna be able to get be together again. That the they they should back off. Like they don't need Republic City. The United, you know, the the Earth Empire is fine the way it is. They can just go back, get married, have the life together, uh, ruling what they have already. <clears throat> And Kubira actually, you know, like she shuts off her mic to tell the dude to find the signal. And she's like, yeah, you're, like, after they find him, yeah, you're right. Uh, I guess we don't need Republic City. I, I, I love you so much and all that stuff. So much for love, man. She freaking fires at the building. <laughs> blows it up. And I'm just like, Kubira, every single time, I hate you. Even <laughs> You can't do this to this man. He's he has been with you since day one. He has been your fiance for three long years. He has done everything you have asked. He uh, he does anything to please you. The moment he gets caught, the moment he gets caught, you automatically just let him go. You don't deserve anybody. I'm sorry. You don't deserve anybody. This man dedicated his life to you. I don't like him, but damn, you don't do that to a brother. I don't know what I was trying to say there, but I'm going to leave it in because that's how it is. Anyways, the episode was fun. I, I, I did like it. Um, it's pretty interesting. Uh, I can't wait to see next week's, and I can't wait to finish this season. Uh, this is by far my favorite season, uh, which isn't saying much because the only other competition would be season one. And uh, sorry about that. And, and that's like, I mean, it was pretty good, but season one. So, anyways, uh, but yeah, that's gonna be it for this review. Thank you guys so much for watching. Leave your thoughts, and comments in the comment section below. Long videos now, so be prepared. <laughs> Uh, but anyways, guys, thank you guys so much for watching. I'm Charles Croxton, and I'll see you guys in future videos.